Hello and welcome to another Ronde Gamer video. Mahaha, the new Ice Berserker, the new Dragon Slayer is here. Skills are official now, well, of course, subject to change as they always are. So, this video will offer you a skills analysis in comparison with two other Imperial Buffing Titans, Krothos and Wixia. We'll have a look at his skills, compare and uh, have and kind of try to understand where he stands in the meta as of now. So as always let's start with his skills. Um, so that's that's him, he's a nice berserker. You're gonna look at some really nice skills when it comes to himself. So if you're low level players, these are possibly things you wanna look at. So He's going to be a fairly fast moving titan hopefully, we'll have to uh, well that's what I would hope at least. He's going to give you 330% ice damage uh, which goes up to a total of 480% when he's attacking. 176 for attack, 44% critical and a fairly large amount of health which is at 357% with a 50% base health which actually puts him probably either the highest I'm pretty sure it's with the highest Berserker health we've seen so far, so that's good. You're also looking at about 200% armor when you're attacking. You're getting a whole host of resists, uh, starting at a respectable 35% for melee, 50% for ranged on attack, and 25% all elemental resists. So uh, the 25% all elemental resists will mean that if you are uh, considering using him in solo attack, you are going to need... Uh, at least about two or three relics, I would say or three relics to get his resist max to the element that you would want. Um, so that's what it will be if you're considering using him as a solo attacker. But uh, we all know for all the high level players, the reason for using uh, Mahaha will be his Imperials. So his Imperials come in, come in with the exact same stats as Mahaha himself. Uh, except the Imperials have a smaller health uh, buff of 240%. So what that means is uh, you do get 176% armor piercing for the Imperials, which is some of the highest you've seen so far. Uh, uh, though I really always wish that 88% number, the base number they have for the X skills for uh, Imperials was um, something around 100, uh, because that extra... 12% uh, doesn't seem a lot, but when you double that, 200%, uh, that's a, that really helps in making bills. Uh, the 44% critical will mean that you are going to need about three, two relics, well, I'll say two relics to get the critical ups. If you get two relics worth 20% each, you can get yourself to 84% critical for the Imperials, um, which is good enough for most purposes, but if you really want to go up a notch, then you would need three relics with the uh, Imperial critical, so you're looking at um, your traditional frost spear, frost bow, perhaps, and some of probably the newer relics in the event to do that, to do that for you. So, yeah, I mean it isn't bad, but uh, I I really do feel that they can start up and up the uh, the critical. Um, the melee resist will really be helpful with 35% melee resist. You are looking at uh, going up to at least about two relics to get to a respectable amount of melee resist but uh, to be honest you're probably gonna need three so because most most relics come with about 18 percent melee resist so if you want to take that to 80 <clears throat> percent and uh, max that out then you're gonna need about let's see uh, 26 30 36 about three relics to do that so three, three relics with melee resist will help you yeah, so that's something to note. Um, the range resist, I don't think that's something you need to be worried worry too much about because if you're using Mahaha on attack, um, I don't think his range units are going to be particularly be a problem, but of course if you're taking on, let's say, a Tarhoon, who's on, who's on defense, then that range resist 50% will certainly help. A 25% is a moderate amount of elemental resist. As I said, for the Maha, for Maha himself, you're going to need three relics to get the elemental resist to the max. Uh, in the case for Imperials, if you've got a Frost Shield, let's say avoid Frost Shield, you can get that to 65%. 
and you're gonna need uh, probably another one uh, let's see your inventory grasp that will take that to 85 percent which is close enough to 90 but if you really want to max it out you need one other one so certain possibilities are there to do that um, now let's talk about the skills which he has the special skills the invoke skills so his first invoke skill is whenever he does a critical hit that is Mahaha does a critical hit you will get one corrupted imperial and you will also freeze one enemy okay so uh, that will happen five times this unlocks at uh, when Maha is level one so the impact of this is as you probably have seen from the, some testing videos is that if Maha dies or is not able to do critical hits uh, fairly often let's say because your Mahaha's critical which is at the base at 44% if you don't get that high enough what that will mean is you stand a lower chance of actually being able to summon corporate imperials and when you are using Mahaha on attack you're probably not going to be putting on too many relics to actually buff himself or his crit rather uh, and that could be a bad move because what that will mean is you're going to need uh, at least so if you don't put any relics and you assuming 44% to be about half a chance so you could look at your Mahaha surviving for 10 critical hits um, uh, well, or 10 hits and out of the 10 hits that he what swipes he makes after that you're going to get one uh, you're going to get five imper corrupted imperials so it's quite crucial then because you don't you don't want your Mahaha to engage in combat with if or even ten hits because even with that large amount of health, uh, most most things that you're gonna attack with Mahaha will be able to kill him pretty quickly. So uh, your idea should be, uh, at least in my opinion, is to take his critical pretty high up, uh, close it to eighty percent or higher, so that uh, you can more or less be assured that in five swipes you're gonna get five corporate imperials and uh, the freezing thing definitely helps um, so where the skill could be used to benefit is um, keeping all your imperials fairly clustered up so that your enemies also are fairly clustered up when they are attacking your uh, attacking Mahaha and uh, once those troops are frozen uh, that could certainly uh, help and, and it also of course help in Mahaha not dying, not dying for the subsequent hit so yeah one strategy could be of um, actually when the battle begins is uh, having your Imperials uh, all cluster up maybe uh, uh, and you know till they form a fairly tight ball doesn't have to be all concentrated but a fairly tight ball and uh, when that happens you um, you, you kind of uh, wait for the enemies to come in and when they are onto your Imperials onto the ball of Imperials you take your Mahaha to do a few swipes and hopefully that will freeze uh, all the enemies because freeze will also have a splash effect if, if the enemy troops are also fairly bundled up and uh, that could be really helpful um, now also what happens is whenever Mahaha does a critical hit there's a half a chance to freeze two enemies within the aura so that can actually work in conjunction with the skill above so you know a lot of stuff basically happens when uh, Mahaha is in action so again that brings to the point that you have to have good control of Mahaha you gotta keep moving him around make sure that he doesn't die and uh, and so again because it's run on the critical um, your um, uh, this can happen 10 times by the way so you will have to at least have your Maha survive for 20 swipes um, assuming that you can have more or less 100% critical there so yeah this skill is going to be quite tricky to actually make complete use of and you unlock that 51 by the way now also if you are lucky enough to get 5 corporate imperials because your Maha survives for 5 critical hits you will also get 20 times 5 that's a hundred percent buff to Maha himself is damage which isn't too relevant when you are taking him on an Imperial base attack uh, but his troops that is Imperials will also get 
a hundred percent damage buff and you're gonna get 10% haste which is in my understanding a speed buff so if you're gonna get a 50% speed buff to, to all the Imperials once that happens I think that's a pretty good skill and uh, uh, that happens uh, five times so you can essentially rely on the fact that your troop damage and AP uh, is gonna rise by a hundred percent if remember the big if is Mahaha can survive for five critical hits and if you get that if you do get a uh, hundred percent extra uh, damage and AP you're looking at the armor piercing of his Imperials going from 176% to 276% um, <clears throat> which is fairly respectable um, because you, you now can start creeping onto with the relics to the 350% or 400% mark 400 I think in my opinion is a is a sweet spot number for when you start crossing 400% you start reaching that point where um, you can almost be you can be fairly confident that you are overcoming the enemy's um, um, enemy's sort of armor so yeah that's something to think about and uh, the the speed of course helps although whether that will help too much we'll have to see because if your troops are in melee combat they're not really running away are they so level 31 there you go Let's just talk about the prestige skills. Amar's prestige skill is you're going to get uh, a 90% base Imperial damage, uh, which is kind of uh, typical for Imperials. So you're going to get that level 10, of course. You're probably starting at 50%. Every 7 seconds within his aura, she's going to have like an aura around him, just like Zabava has, an area of effect around him. And every 7 seconds, and there's no limit to this, by the way, which is pretty good, um, you will build up additional troop damage and armor piercing and you get that unlocked at prestige level 1 so what does that mean well since it happens every 7 seconds um, and there's no limit to this if you have a, a so let's say in a minute you have you have about 60 seconds that's let's say a minute in 10 seconds so 10 times so in 1 minute 10 seconds this will happen 10 times so if you can have your titan survive for 1 minute 10 seconds uh, and then you can have 200 and f well, it's not 25 times uh, 25 times 10, isn't it? That's what it means. 25 times 10 would be 250% Titan and troop damage and AP buff. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? So uh, I don't know. That will that that will be kind of curious, but how that builds up. But uh, yeah, seven times 10. Yep. That look, that's looking pretty nice. I think I, I believe there was a limit before to this, but the, clearly from the blog I don't see a limit, so that can actually change a lot of things because the armor piercing you do need a lot of armor piercing to make that make things work. Also, within his aura, you're gonna get a minus three percent reduction to the melee of the enemies, but you only unlock that at prestige level four and above. So if you are not in a state of or not willing to prestige him further than that, then you're not gonna get that. Um, benefiting you so that's something to remember and so if it happens 12 times 12 times 3 is 36 percent melee resist uh, decrease that's quite nice and um, so if you are your enemy is at max melee resist you can basically get that 80 down to was it 44 so that's pretty good and then if you get it to 7 plus you can get your ice resist down by 36 percent as well and that'll be at 7%. Uh, That's an ice resist for your enemy. So, yeah. I think if you're looking at taking Mahaha to go and attack um, any um, any sort of not really um, high damage dealing enemies, such as um, <clears throat> such as Rockstam's Horde, then you're going to need Prestige level 7 and above, in my opinion. And at level 10, the special thing you get is. Whenever one of your Imperial's health falls below 40%, um, you're going to get a rage on their location. So wherever they are, uh, they're going to get a rage. And if your Imperial's are all uh, huddled up, then all of them will get a rage. That can happen eight times. So yeah, pretty good effect, I think. Let's talk about the relics in this event. You're going to get Draco Glacies, uh, which gives you... Titan damage, troop health, Titan troop melee and resist, uh, overall excellent relic, 
Uh, you can also equip it on, the, on a weak save if you have that as well, so quite nice. But it is limited to only Ice Titans because of the first skill. Uh, but the Titan and Troop Health will certainly be very helpful to the Titan because you do want to have your Titan survive uh, to do all those critical hits. So good relic from that opinion, and the Troop Melee Ranges will certainly help to take that 35% melee to 51%. That could be really helpful. Um, Anguta's Grasp, uh, pretty good relic as well. I think the relics are all pretty good, I think, in this event. Uh, the Titan Health would be could be quite nice. The troop damage helps and uh, the 64% Imperial health and armor piercing would be beneficial. Now this relic would be beneficial, these two relics actually, both of them, uh, the Grasp and the Heart of Tizaruk. Uh, Tizaruk will be helpful only if you are uh, capable of getting your corrupted Imperials on the battlefield, i.e. do 5 critical hits with Mahaha. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but the 20% Titan and Troop All Elemental Resist, this is a very good relic from the point that you can actually use this on any Titan in the game because uh, this isn't specific to uh, Ice Titans. So you can quite nicely have this um, as a add-on to some other Titan that, that you have as well. So I'll, I quite have like this, could, could go on to some other builds. Um, so yeah, that's something to think about. Corruptor Imperials, by the way, they have more. They have 50% uh, more health, 50% more damage. They move 30% faster, but they do have this a decreased armor piercing. Not sure by how much. So yeah, but my my estimation is it's probably around 50. It's probably around like 30% or something like that. Yeah, probably not not too much. Um, talking about the actual. Uh, Boost Titans, you can get 1.4 from the Titan himself, Mahaha, Progenitor, Krothos and Vixia. If you're looking for pure speed, I think Progenitor would probably be good because you can get 5 summons, 5 um, uh, Omega Imperials. Uh, but Krothos and Vixia will also be pretty quick in their own right. Uh, 1.2x with all 4 star ty Ice Titans, 1.1 with 3 star Ice Titans, Chalice of Ice being the boost Titan this time. You got your turn available at 9000 souls, progenitor at 15, and Mahaha at 22,000 souls. So although it's a 26,000 souls event, um, the Titan himself is around 22, which has been the case with all Dragon Slayers. The Draco Glaces, the Grasp, and the Tizurk are all stretch goals available beyond that point. I think the in terms of the uh, come to the to the well come to the relics in a moment, but the other relics in the moment, but you're looking at the Lance Rewards, the first, well not the first time, but one of the few times you've seen a level 60 Titan awarded as a level 1. Um, so, yep, if you are uh, in uh, one of those top alliances and you really want yourself a maxed version of him, Mahaha, then uh, yeah, you could be in for a surprise, because well, you get a maxed Titan, which you have to basically only add uh, well, you can use them to play straight away, so that's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, and you get progenitor if you're level 51 to 100. So if you're not particularly looking for getting dual copy of him, um, because yeah, I mean he does have a certain defensive value, but um, I'm sure that um, Tarhun, for example, will be quite strong against him uh, because you don't get that additional range buff when he's on defense, and not many. Uh, you know, people out there will actually have uh, it will have Mahaha set up for defense with high range resist so but even though if you don't want to get yourself a double then if you don't want to get yourself a double that is then you can just get yourself into an alliance which is getting you some more prestige fodder so get yourself a progenitor to uh, well to add uh, to serve as prestige fodder for him in terms of relics you got frozen daggers which offer a very high percentage of arm piercing at 36 percent and a, and a pretty large number, 45% troop damage buff. So quite an nice relic, if you, and you probably will want to do something like this to get your armor piercing as high as you can for certain defenses. Uh, of Justice, an old school relic, but still relevant today because you, the 24 being the number reason for that, you get 24%, uh, which is higher than what you get even with, with grasp, elemental grasp. 24% resistance to physical and fire in this case, and uh, Titan troop and ice damage. So, certainly, if you're considering setting up a defensive build, I think an orb of justice will form a good component because you could see uh, this being an important relic for defending against Tarhuns. 
Banner of Frost will give you some more armor. And there could be an argument of actually building a high armor for your Mahaha because your Mahaha gets about 200% armor, I believe. So that you could start building, uh, stacking a lot of armor because Imperials do start with 80% armor uh, when they are level 25, that is. So 280% armor plus 30, 310. You can actually start getting your armor to such high levels that um, you can actually get effective um, redu damage reduction uh, when you use them on defense. So yeah, there's a wall attack. So that, that's definitely something worth considering. Staff of Ice, personally one which I was looking for, looking to get for a long time. Well, it's been in a few events, but um, it's always been with relics that I've had. So this time I'll be looking forward to get him, get this relic. Three gain free spells, 40% freeze duration, 50% freeze radius. Fantastic relic um, for uh, using on builds where you want to stop the enemy, especially fast moving troops. So Ian Gora, a lot of people who attack Ian Gora with Zabava have Staff of Ice on there. So very good relic, definitely very versatile. Things available, I think, at 21,000 souls, something like that. So yeah, uh, probably worth the price, in my opinion. So here's a quick comparison between Mahaha, Wixia and Krothos. Uh, Krothos being the other berserker in this uh, comparison. So if you compare those two together, uh, if you look at the pure damage, well, um, Mahaha does more damage. Uh, but when it comes to uh, defense, actually it's Krothos and Wixia do that do that do slightly more. Um, you got, you're looking at armor piercing. Um, uh, you got more armor piercing as well compared to both of them, but uh, they're all the same when it comes to defense. When it comes to health, Vixia actually has got the most health, uh, with 297% health, which is interesting, isn't it? Um, and actually you get even more health when you look at the prestige skill. So actually Vixia does a better job at uh, creating more meaty, or at least health-wise, Imperials than it uh, than Yes, you got the 50% compared to 40% base health difference, but that isn't as significant as the uh, as the number you see there, the 240 and 297. When it comes to armor, uh, actually Wixie has got more armor, uh, Maha has got lesser armor, uh, which is also interesting. Um, when you're looking at the melee resist, they all are about the same, with Krothos having slightly larger. Uh, Krothos does a better job with range resist compared to the other two. Uh, but Krothos doesn't have any elemental resist, which both Maha, which both Maha and Vixia has. Vixia is pretty good actually in this comparison because when it comes to her Imperials uh, stacking up, I think she compares pretty closely with Maha. Um, but uh, when it comes to attack, though, Maha will still take the prize, uh, given the fact that uh, the differences between the armor only reduced thirty-eight percent. The health is it's not too far off, although Wix has still got more health, but you do get that extra most and the most important aspect, the extra 88% uh, armor piercing, which really sets Maha apart and makes him a, a better attacker than Wix, in my opinion. Uh, looking at the skills, we already looked at Maha's skills. You get all those, uh, it's all dependent on him doing critical hits. Krothos also has that effect that whenever he does a critical hit, uh, there's a half a chance of freezing an enemy near him. Uh, and raging and casting rage on the titan and that does offer a, sp um, a splash effect so troops around him will also get raged up um, and uh, yeah so that's kind of useful you also have a uh, so for Vixia whenever the battle starts you get three ice archers and then an allied that you get another five you can get another five ice archers so it's all about getting those special ice archers and uh, you can also freeze two enemies so there's so Vixia does pretty something special and those freezing of the enemies can actually be particularly annoying when you come across a Vixia on defense. But when it comes to uh, I think attack, uh, the, the, the fact that Maha can further stack on armor piercing with his Imperial spawn effect, I think that definitely puts him at a high pedestal. Um, yep, I think uh, that's it really. It, um, when it comes to pure damage, I think uh, Maha will still be the top dog here. Uh, coming in close for damage will be Krothos the second place and Wixia in the third when it comes to damage. When it comes to health, Wixia will be the first, Maha second and Krothos third. 
Uh, and to finally end this slide, they're looking at next week, you're going to have Titans Unleashed Berserkers event. So you can go ahead and, and uh, level up your um, level up your new Mahaha then. And you can, we'll also have a Theatres of War event, Holiday Edition, not sure what that means, but we're probably looking at some Winter Relics. Uh, maybe relics that might actually be helpful to, to particularly newer players such as um, getting in uh, something like Frostbow and um, uh, you know some of those spe special ice relics that you might want. Alright guys, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you found this uh, comparison helpful. Uh, let me know whether you are considering going for Mahaha and his relics, whether this sort of... Uh, um, I didn't excite you, but that's it for this video and I'll catch you all another.